Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in today. This is Kathy, and I will be creating a slider card today. And this is the first time that I've ever created a slider card. So I had to kind of make do with what I had in my stash to create it. Um, my Favorite Things has a great tutorial on how to create a slider card. So what I did was I watched that video. It was one of the Camp Create Session 1 projects. And I watched that video and kind of had to wiggle it and jiggle it to make it work with the products that I had on hand. Um, of course, we'll get to that towards the end of the video about how I went about doing that. But to start out, I stamped the image Free Spirits from Purple Onion Designs onto a piece of Canson watercolor cardstock using VersaFine Onyx Black ink and decided to challenge myself and get used to using a water brush. I had mentioned in a previous video that I struggle with them because for whatever reason, I think that I have to squeeze it every time I use it. And guess what? You don't. Um, you do have to squeeze it just to get the water going a little bit. Um, but after that, this water brush that comes with the real brush pens works pretty well. I really took my time and paid attention to what I was doing, and I'm really happy with how this little image turned out when I was done coloring it. So what I did was I worked in small sections, and I put down just a tiny little bit of water. The cardstock is barely glistening at all. Once I had the water down, I went in with the real brush pens and let the water do the work for me. And as you can see, the real brush pens, they blend really nicely together um, all on their own. I didn't really have to work too hard to get these colors to blend. Um, I mean, coloring the flowers was pretty easy because I didn't have to think about it too much, but this image here, this little critter guy, there are some pretty tiny areas, but the way the tips are on these brush pens, they come to a really nice fine point. So it was pretty easy to get into the really tiny areas and add the color where I wanted it to. Um, oh yes, and I have a coupon code for you for the Arteza website. I'll make sure to link that down below and I'll also give you the promo code so that you can save 10% on your purchase over at the Arteza website. And the coupon code is valid for any purchase. It does not have to be the real brush pens. Um, but if you do buy them and you do use them and you do love them, which I really think you will love them, um, let me know what you think of them. So anyway, all of the colors that I used will be listed down below as well as over on my blog. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and play some music for you while I finish up the coloring of this image. And then I'll be back to show you how I created the cloudy sky background. And from there, we'll move on to how I created the sidewalk. And then we'll put the card together.
Okay, after I was done coloring the image, I taped down a piece of Canson watercolor cardstock and then used a pretty wide brush and I added quite a bit of water to the cardstock and then just kind of scribbled with my blue brush pen. And again, the individual colors will be listed down below as well as on my blog. Then I used a smaller brush to kind of spread it out and move it around. And while I was doing the scribbling, I made sure to leave some white space so that it would look like there were some clouds in the sky. Once I had the first layer down, I used my heat tool to dry that up. And after I dried that, I decided to add just a little bit more blue to try and get a little, to try to get a few more clouds in the background there. So literally just scribbled some color down and then went over it with a wet brush to soften the color a little bit. And then I heat set that again. Okay, so to create the sidewalk, I took a piece of Canson watercolor cardstock and I cut it to five and a half by one and a quarter. Then I used my cutting mat, a pencil, and a ruler to draw diagonal lines on what will be my sidewalk so that I could have the separation between the sidewalk squares. And I used the diagonal stripe on my cutting mat as a guide to make sure that I was getting them straight. Is a diagonal line straight? You know what I mean. After I had the lines drawn for the sidewalk, I grabbed a piece of fun foam that was sitting behind me and used a scoring tool just to create the little divots that you would see in a sidewalk. And I used the fun foam just because it made it easier to actually get the impression from the score line. Next, I used a pretty wet paintbrush and went over the cardstock and then scribbled on some gray ink and then softened it out with the brush again and then added a little bit more color and then went over it with a wet brush just to smooth it out a little bit more. I didn't want it to be perfect because a sidewalk isn't like a flat perfect gray unless of course it's a brand new one. After I was done with that I used my heat tool to dry it up and then I used a fine tip gray marker just to trace down those diagonal lines to make them stand out just a tad bit more. The next thing I did was I used a stitched rectangle die and taped a piece of green cardstock using temporary tape at the bottom of it and ran that through my die cut machine. I do like to have a stitched border so that's why I did that and I did want to have some grass behind the sidewalk so that's why I did that. Now I had previously cut my pull tab for my slider card and it is three quarters of an inch by five inches or five and a quarter inches, excuse me. And so I made a little mark on the green card stock at three quarters of an inch to make sure that I placed the grassy border die high enough to, so that it, so that my pull tab wouldn't show through. Next, I'm counting up the stitch marks from the stitched rectangle die. So I know where to start drawing in my guide to actually create the slider channel. So I counted up uh, high enough for the sidewalk and for the slider channel. So what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing in a rectangle. That is actually going to be my guide so that I know where to punch the channel for my slider. And I needed to make a little mark as to where my little character guy would go and by the way I did fussy cut that image out and it really wasn't too bad but if I could do it over again I think I would have used my craft knife to get in between the bicycle frame and um, where his hands are by the handles although that's neither here nor there anyway back to creating the little slider channel once I had the rectangle drawn in I moved it in just a little bit so it wasn't didn't go quite didn't go out quite so far and then erase, erased the extra pencil line so I would know where to actually cut the channel. Now I don't have the slider dies. There are die sets out there to do this um, but I do have this punch and it is an old punch from Stampin' Up. I believe it's called Word Window. I'm pretty sure it's no longer available but if you have another punch that is similar in shape um, you could use that. If you have the die set to create that, obviously you could use that. 
Um, but if you don't have either a punch or a die set, you could just use a ruler and a craft knife and just cut out that rectangle. Um, the ends of the slider channel, they don't have to be curved. They can just be square. So once I had that lined up and it wasn't perfectly straight, but it was straight enough and it worked out just fine. Once I had that down, I used a piece of temporary tape to put my pull tab on the back. And you'll see that I do have a little bit of, a little bit of it hanging outside of the edge there. Um, because you're going to want your recipient to have something to pull to make your little character move across the front of the card. And I put a tiny piece of foam tape at the end of the channel. What that little piece does is that is where the bicycle, the back bicycle tire is going to be placed. So that's why I put that down there first. Now on the back side, I created a collar to go around my pull tab. And this was a trick that I learned from the video um, over on the My Favorite Things channel. And it's a piece of printer paper that's cut a quarter of an inch wide. I wrapped it loosely around the pull tab and glued it together. Then I put some adhesive on the back side of it and slid that over the pull tab and adhered that down onto the back. And basically what that does is it keeps your pull tab from going all wonky when you pull the tab out. It just kind of helps keep it in a more, in a straighter line when you pull it out. I guess that's the best way to put it. The next thing I did was I added just a tiny little bit of foam tape right behind the end of my pull tab. And that is going to be the stopper so the pull tab doesn't end up getting lost inside the card. The next thing I did was I kind of was wiggling around with the placement and I put the piece, the sidewalk piece down on the bottom and tucked the grass behind to make sure that I didn't have a gap between the sidewalk and the grass. Once I was happy with the placement, I just used regular tape runner to adhere that down. The next step was to add some foam tape so that the sidewalk would be popped up from the grass. And when I put the foam tape on there, I, I thought about it and I almost put it on the back of the sidewalk, but then I remembered that I got to make sure that I don't block the channel for the slider. So I cut a strip of foam tape and placed it directly on the front of the card panel that's going to go on the front of the card. I cut the foam tape in half to make sure that it didn't cover up that channel. Again, that's kind of an important thing because if you cover up that channel, then um, your little character or whatever you're going to have slide across your card won't be able to move. So I put it along the bottom and then I put it on either side, but I didn't put any foam tape above the slider channel again, just to make sure that my little fox and frog could slide across the card easily. So the next thing that I had to do was figure out the placement of a piece of foam tape for the front wheel of the bike. So I just took a tiny little piece and placed it down on the pull tab. So now I know about where he's going to be going across the sidewalk. These little green circles, I just used the smallest circle from my Hero Arts Infinity Circle dies and in the My Favorite Things video, she called them caps, and I'm not really sure what they are or why I did that, but that's what she did, and I figured I'm going to do what she did because she's a pro at making slider cards. I just adhered those directly onto the foam tape that was down on the pull tab. Next, I cut two pieces of scrap cardstock and used some score tape to adhere those to the green caps. The fox and the frog on the bike are going to be adhered to those cardstock strips. And by doing this, I can actually hide my slider channel. So that is why I created those strips of cardstock. After I adhered the sidewalk down to the card panel, I put two tiny pieces of foam tape at the bottom of the cardstock strips, but above the sidewalk. And that is where I'm going to adhere my little guys on the bicycle. 
and I used a pencil just to kind of make a mark because I needed to cut off the excess strips of cardstock so I thought that it would definitely be easier just to have them way too long and then just trim them down as I needed to. After I trimmed down those cardstock strips I just attached my little bicycle to the foam squares and then removed the temporary tape on the back and pulled the tab to make sure that it went smoothly which it did and then I put a whole bunch of foam tape on the back side of the card again making sure to avoid the pull tab and just adhered that to the front of a top folding a two size note card and that finishes up my card for today thank you so much for tuning in don't forget I have that coupon code for the arteza.com website so you can save 10% on your purchase if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.